But when the time shall come, you may remember that I told of them these things I said unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me whither thou goest. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth that it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. You might feel that you are a small man of people planting a church. You might feel that you've not got any resources. You might feel a small, despised people in your community, wherever you are, in serving God. Well, you're not alone because in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord was about to die and uh, for sin. And when he was going to die for sin, he was going to leave behind when he rose again and ascended to the Father. He was going to leave a small band of disciples. These disciples were didn't have much money. They didn't have many qualifications. They, they didn't have much about them, humanly speaking. They were a small group of people. And yet this small group of people God used to change the whole Roman Empire. And you might feel that you're a small, despised people today, but with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do amazing things. Let's turn to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel 37. So the necessity of the Holy Spirit, that is, no matter how weak we feel, the Holy Spirit will fill us and use us mightily for His glory. Ezekiel 37. <coughs> Excuse me. And we read verse 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very, very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest again. He said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you. And you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bones to his bones. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto them, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say unto the wind, Thus says the Lord God, Come, the four winds of breath, and breathe upon the slain, and they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried, and our bones are hope is lost we are cut off from our parts therefore prophesy and said unto them thus saith the lord god behold or for my people i will open your grave and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of israel and you shall know that i am the lord when i have opened your graves O my people and brought you up out of your graves and you and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and i will place you in your own land then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. So here there are dry bones in the valley, the, the, the bone, there are dead bones, basically, and God breathes on them and they become alive, become these skeletons, become real people. And that's a picture of the church. The church is like dead bones, but God can breathe on the church and make it alive on his power. If you turn to Isaiah 44, Isaiah 44, Isaiah chapter 44, we read these words, verse 1 and 3, Yet hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen, thus says the Lord, that made thee and formed thee from, from the womb which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou Jerusalem, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon dry ground, and I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thy offspring and they shall spring up as among the grass as willows by the watercourses all shall say i am the lord and another shall call himself by name or jacob and another shall subscribe with his hand unto the lord and a surname uh, surname himself by the name of israel so god is saying there 
you know, don't fear that. Where there's dry ground, I'm going to pour water on. And, and that's to you as a, a servant of God. Maybe you're preaching in a church and it's not it's not hearing the word of God as it should. Fear not, for God will pour his, his spirit on that church. You might be a, a missionary and working in a land that doesn't seem to be responding to the gospel. Fear not, for the Holy Spirit will work and, and work in people. So, so whatever opposition you're going through, fear not, the Holy Spirit will work. So the Holy Spirit is going to work. Floods of, of this Holy Spirit are going to come and work in your situation. I think, uh, is it Acts chapter 2? Acts chapter 2, sorry, I've got an itchy nose. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Verse 2 and 5, I think. It says... And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with one another tongue, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the Spirit of God came at Pentecost and moved powerfully, and that was the birthday of the early church. Ideas are not going to change your situation in your church planting situation. You can have ideas. You know, there are a lot of think tanks amongst many denominations where people get together and think their new ideas of how to move church forward. But ideas are not going to cut it. Human ability. You can call the pastor with great human ability. It's not going to cut it. It's not going to change your situation. You can pour money into your denomination, into your church. It's not going to do it. You can use power, authority, using your authority as a leader to try and move the situation in your church but it's not going to do it the only thing that can change your situation is the spirit of god samuel chadwick says the church is the body of christ and the spirit is the spirit of christ he fills the body directs it move directs its movements controls its members inspires its wisdom supplies its strength that is the holy spirit the necessity of the holy spirit we need the holy spirit the power of the Holy Spirit. If you turn to John chapter 16, verse 8 to 11. John chapter 16. John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verse 8 to 11. It says, And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, but I go to my Father, and ye say no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. And I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And you shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. That is the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, I used to like watching when I was a child uh, those films by Clint Eastwood where he would have the magnum gun and he would shoot the gun and the bullet would just go through the cars, through the wall and hit the target. And you know, the Holy Spirit's like that. The Holy Spirit's like a magnum gun. He, he's unstoppable. He's unstoppable, my friend. And we need to realize that when the Holy Spirit moves, nothing can stop him. The world may mock God. The church may feel weak. But the Holy Spirit will do his work and no one will be able to ignore Jesus as the Holy Spirit moves. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. The Holy Spirit shows the world the judgment. The Holy Spirit points to Christ. Philippians chapter 3. Notice here how the Holy Spirit's working in Paul and notice what Paul does. He points to Christ. Listen. Here's a man of the Spirit. Philippians chapter 3. 1 to 14. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of concision, for we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath, wherein he might trust in the flesh, I am all. Circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, the Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. 
concerning the zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Ye doubtless that I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness which is of the law, that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already obtained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after, if any, that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Whether I can not myself to have apprehended, for this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto the things which are before. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So for Paul, it's all about Christ. He's pointed to Christ. This is a man of the Spirit. A lot of preachers today, it's all about them. A lot of preachers on the television, it's all about them. A lot of pastors today in churches, it's all about them. They talk relentlessly and all the time about themselves. In fact, 95% of sermons that you hear today the preachers are making themselves out to be heroes. It's all about themselves and their stories about who they are. For Paul, it's about Christ. The Spirit of God is working in him, and the Spirit points to Christ, and Paul points to Christ. That's when you know when the work of God is at work in a powerful way, when people are pointing to Christ. The Holy Spirit, says one writer, always glorifies Christ. Whatever kind of work the Holy Spirit does, whatever kind of guidance the Holy Spirit gives, it will always be for Christ's glory. And there's a lot of things going on on, in, on the TV today, on Christian TV and the Sun Good Child. There's a lot going on today that are not pointed to Christ. They're not lifting Christ up as they should. It's all about man and uh, not about Christ. And when the Spirit of God works, the world cannot ignore him. If you turn to Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, 1332, Acts chapter 4, 1332. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them as they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. And you could read right up to verse 32. And it's just relentless. They tried to 